Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Hello, and thank you for joining us once again on your daily Bible study, Deeper. We are very happy to have you, and we want to ask that you will join us in our daily studies. We have also notes in our website, pathwaytoparadise.org. We have guidelines. We have studies that you can use and prepare your studies uh, for giving the lesson. And there is many other resources that are available for you to use. We welcome also your feedback, any thoughts, any questions. Please write us and let us know what they are, and we will try and do our best to answer them. My name is David Salazar, and with me is Dr. Tun Ramsey, and together, once again, we'll be able to share what this message for today, the second angel's message, is all about. Let us, before we start, let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day and for the chance you have you have given us to be able to study together and, and have the freedom to research and find more about what your truth and what your messages are for us today. We ask that your Holy Spirit may be our guide and our teacher and may lead us into all truth. We pray all these in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, Tim, today, Wednesday, March 6, we have uh, the second angel's message. Now, let's briefly read this message that is given by heaven to the people in the earth. Revelation chapter 14 Verses 8 says, And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now, Tim, in this this, uh, message, in the second angel's message, we see here um, a, a title to the system that has caused the earth to be corrupted or or have followed into deception. What is this m- system called here in this verse? It is called Babylon, the great city that has fallen. Thank you, Tim. And you know, well, this is you know, nothing new for you, but, oh, but you know, it's important to be able to discuss this. What does the word Babylon mean in Bible prophecy? Well, actually, what does the word Babylon means, period, in, 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 the, in, in, in the Greek? Uh, confusion, I believe. You're right. It is confusion. And, you know, Babylon comes from the back, that, 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 that first story that we hear in Genesis. And uh, it's, it's a story of the Tower of Babel. And remember that story in, in Genesis that, uh, that happened right after the flood, after the earth had been wiped because of their sin and iniquity, had been wiped by the blood, the flood. There was this desire of, con- of building a huge city and a tower in that city that will prevent uh, the nations or the people to be wiped away if there would come another flood. Now, they built this city this to honor themselves, not to honor God, and they made this tower. But when the Lord saw that it was not going to follow or, or lead people into worship him, but to worship themselves, uh, the Lord did something to them. And what was that? He came and he confuses their languages, uh, stops the building project, and effectively scatters the people all over the face of the earth. Thank you, Tim. Exactly. So we see that there is confusion. And that's why Babylon or Babel, or which is the root word for Babylon, means confusion. Now, the Lord calls... Let me, that, yeah. David, can I jump in for a second here? Uh, there's something really interesting about the word Babel. The root of that word is B-A-B, Bob. And as you just mentioned, uh, in Hebrew, that means confusion. And certainly from God's perspective, what was happening was utter confusion there at the Tower of Babel. In Babylonian, B-A-B means something entirely different. It means the gate of God. And this, in the mindset of the people that were building this tower, they thought that they were building a gateway to heaven, didn't they? Uh, That they would reach heaven themselves. And so we find even in the name itself, uh, two very different understandings of what humanity can do on its own. We right. believe we can reach and become God on our own. In God's eyes, that is all utter nonsense and confusion. 
Exactly. And so which side are we going to pick? Are we going to stick by the Lord's side and, and realize and see what is what it is named for and what it stands for? Or are we going to look into the human aspect and realize, oh, no, this is really, really we are getting somewhere with, with Babylon. And so, again, if you're spiritually minded and you believe the word of God and you are following the Lord, you will see Babylon for what it is. But if you have rejected, if you are not following the Lord and you have rejected his word, you will see Babylon as human beings will see it as its gateway to heaven. So interesting concept. And thank you, Tim, for that explanation. So <clears throat> the Lord here is giving us this instruction that Babylon has fallen. Now, it mentions this word fallen twice. And it is interesting to, to keep this in mind because it's telling you that this, this concept of fallen, which is pipto, uh, the Greek word pipto means to fall down, to have fallen from, from a point of of, uh, of, of a higher place to a lower place. I mean, it mentions it twice, indicating that it is not possible for this system to come back to, to be unfallen, to be able to be cleansed or to be converted, if you will. This is a system that cannot and will not change. It's a system that cannot ch- turn around and become good again. It is a system that is considered fallen, and God is telling us that there's nothing that uh, it will do that will change its course. So <clears throat> unfortunately, many of us have forgotten that it is sadly the world, as it mentioned in, in, in the verse, that this city has caused all nations. I mean, everyone, that includes the, the you know, all nations, uh, whether they're religious, whether they're Christian, whether they are, um, you know, uh, somehow aligned to her. It's telling you that that's the influence of this of this this beast or this this uh, system has gone through all nations because it has given to drink of the wine of her the rat of her fornication. So the doctrines, the education, the ideas, the concepts have been put into every place in the world. And so, Tim, let's let's think for a moment here. Well, you, we're, first, we're going to analyze a little bit in the in the spiritual sense, as we're speaking here in a spiritual matter as well. Um, how how can we see that around the time when these messages were given to this world and have been given to be preached since that point forward, uh, has there been any religious, any false movements, if you will, or any on any false uh, ideas that have sprung up? As, as confusion to the world and and again will lead people astray from the true doctrine has there any any of them minister oh, any Sorry. of these coming up certainly let me first make reference to a fairly well known statement in testimonies volume 5 page 451 uh, quoting when protestantism shall stretch her hand across the gulf to grasp the hand of the roman power when she shall reach over the abyss to clasp hands with spiritualism when under the influence of this threefold union, our country shall repudiate every principle of its constitution. And she goes on there. Here's the point I want to make is that Babylon is a conglomeration of uh, religious and quasi-religious movements that have united together. How about uh, spiritualism here? We were talking yesterday about the year 1844. Um, In the year 1848, a pair of sisters in New England, they're they're known today as the Fox Sisters, uh, started hearing weird, strange rapping sounds in their house. And they uh, attempted to communicate back by knocking on doors and so forth. Uh, Long story short, uh, today, and you can search online for uh, spiritualist uh, churches and so forth, they're very open about this. Uh, These two sisters are even today regarded as the... um, beginning of modern spiritualism. Right. However, they didn't get famous alone. There was a man named Andrew Jackson Davis, uh, and he really took these two sisters and pushed them into the spotlight. He himself was a spiritualist, and four years before their experience in 1848, uh, and you can do the math, 1848 minus four is 1844, And that year, Andrew Jackson Davis had an experience which was to change the course of his life. On the evening of March 6th, Davis was suddenly overcome by some power which led him to fly from Poughkeepsie, New York, where he lived and hurry off in a semi-trance state upon a rapid journey. So in the year 1844, uh, Andrew Jackson Davis, uh, in many ways the father of modern spiritualism, uh, he has this experience which sets him off on this course. 
And so we have spiritualism uh, beginning here in 1844. Hmm, incredible. But was this the only movement, the spiritualism, which has swept around the world? I mean, you can just see every especially today i mean we have seen the results how much it has grown you know the in in media in tv in movies uh you name it oh, it's yeah. the concepts of spiritualism have embraced and have become so popular so strong that today people uh i mean not only accept it but many of them think is actually good to have that type of lifestyle or experiences. So again, we see mm -hmm. that, but not only that aspect of spiritualism, what else has it came up around that time? Well, there were a number of uh, religious movements uh, in the United States that uh, trace their origin back to these years. Uh, in addition to the Millerites, uh, which became a group of them, of course, became the Seventh-day Adventist church. Um, probably the most well-known one would be the Mormon church, which of course is a worldwide movement. Right. Uh, there were others as well. Uh, let me just briefly mention one that's probably not so well known, but you're going to find this interesting, I think. Uh, do a search online sometime. Go to Google and search for the Baha'i, B-A-H-A-I faith. It's, uh, well, it's relatively small, but it has at least 8 million members worldwide. So it's, it's, it's not just a ripple <laughs> in terms of what's happening in the world. But uh, they're very open uh, in their explanatory statements on their websites that their religion got its start in the year 1844 when the 2300-year uh, prophecy ended. Uh, so mm. very fascinating here. And, and by the way, uh, the Baha'i faith is uh, very open about its agenda to unite humanity, to, to unite the religions. Uh, they're quite active uh, in the uh, United Nations as well. Um, and so here we have just another very interesting movement that dates itself back to this same time period, this same year of 1844. And uh, David, I know that uh, we're running out of time here, but Revelation is very clear by its use of the term Babel or Babylon that all of these various uh, elements of spiritualism, Protestantism, uh, Catholicism, even other world religions will eventually unite together and that will create this end time Babylon. Exactly, Tim. Thank you. And of course, we can see that uh, the movements, as you mentioned, Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses as well, that we have as uh, Christian science and, and other religions have come up with a mixture of beliefs and, and, and again, counterfeit systems that uh, even you know, believe in prophets and the spirit of prophecy, uh, according to what they believe, obviously, which is not the word of God or the Bible. But all of these things have come up, again, to bring confusion and bring people to uh, deception. Now, <clears throat> I, I do want to end uh, with this thought. Remember that it is said that the, this, this second angel message, it, it states that all nations have drank of the wine of the rod of her fornication. And of course, fornication is doctrine, it's false doctrine, it's, it's, uh, it's, it deals with uh, false religion. But uh, also that wrath, the word wrath, it means passion, it means uh, ending, uh, an idea, indignation. And by giving the whole world parts of these concepts of falsehood, these concepts of deception, it has created the world to wander after Babylon and the world has been deceived. But last, and, and the last thing I want to say and mention is that it not only implies religion, it implies also our education, our system of life. We have departed and the world has departed from what the word of God has stated, how are we to live and how we're to have even our, our education or our system of, of, of how to, to, to do business and things of that nature. So I believe that God is asking us today, are you willing to recognize that this system has fallen? If you recognize that, ask the Lord to help you to come free and be part of the group that reject Babylon in its teachings. Well, this is it for today. We ask that you will continue to be with us tomorrow and may God bless you as we study more of God's Word. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. 
To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.